Hey guys, today I am casually sitting on the floor with this lovely selection of plants to talk to you guys about the whole thrifting and reselling business. I honestly don't remember the last time or if I've even ever done a long just sit down and let me tell you how to do something type of video because honestly I would not consider myself an expert in practically anything in this world. But one thing that I do have a decent amount of experience with is the thrifting and reselling business. And a lot of you guys have requested that I talk about it. So here goes nothing, I guess. Um, for those of you who don't really know what I'm talking about, basically what I do is I've been running this side business for a couple years. I like to think of it basically as an online boutique slash vintage store. I go to thrift stores and estate sales and pick out clothing that I think is really cool. And then I model it, take photos and put it online, sell it for a profit and then ship it out. And hopefully people enjoy their clothing that they bought from me. Obviously I'm not the first person to do this at all. There are a ton of girls and guys who run Instagram shops, shops on Depop and Poshmark. And I think it's actually a fairly popular business model, especially in cities like LA where I live or New York. I will say I am by no means a pro at this and there are a ton of people who do what I'm doing a lot better, but I do make like a decent amount of money, a couple hundred dollars to maybe like $500 a month, depending on how much effort I put in based off my little reselling business situation. So, and also personally, I think it's a really cool way to be part of the sustainable fashion movement. I think the statistic is somewhere around 90% of clothes that's donated in thrift stores never get sold. So by buying clothes from like Goodwill or Salvation Army, whether it's for yourself or for a business, Business. You're not only supporting a charitable cause, but you're also buying clothing that would likely go into a landfill and hopefully giving some new life to some vintage pieces. At least that's how I like to think about it. I started reselling clothing online a little over four years ago. I actually didn't start by selling thrifted clothing, but I had just realized that I had way too much crap that I didn't like to wear in my closet. And my new year's resolution was to clear it out and kind of refresh my closet. So I got on Poshmark, which was definitely the biggest reselling app back in what, 2014. So I sold my old clothes online kind of casually for a couple years, but when I really started getting into it was actually last summer. Basically I've told the story before, but I had never really been into thrifting before, but last summer I got my wisdom teeth taken out and for around two weeks afterwards I was just a miserable chipmunk ass human being. My cheeks were so puffy and I was in so much pain. So out of boredom, I was like, why don't I distract myself from my suffering and go to the thrift store. And what I noticed while I was there, because apparently I'm always in hustling mode, even when I'm a chipmunk, is that there were a lot of cool pieces that I could pick up that weren't necessarily like perfect for my style or perfect for my body type, but I could probably sell them to other people. Also on that summer, I happened to be on a kick of reading books written by celebrities because I'm a piece of pop culture trash like that. They are very easy to read and very amusing, okay? So after I went on my little thrifting adventure, I picked up Girl Boss by Sofia Amoroso. She's the founder of Nasty Gal, which I guess is now kind of <laughs> defunct, but how she started out her business was actually reselling thrifted and vintage clothing on eBay. And that's really what made me realize that I wasn't crazy and a lot of other people were doing this and it could be a legitimate business if I wanted to keep going with it. A little bit of a plug before we jump into the facts and figures of the business. This video is brought to you by Audible. And I I did want to say if you guys are interested in getting into the whole reselling thing or starting any type of business this summer but if you're also busy like working or interning or if you're not like a pale workaholic hermit like me and you're actually enjoying the great outdoors a great way to multitask while you do that is to listen to audiobooks audible has girl boss on audiobook they also have a bunch of other of my like favorite celebrity female empowerment books they have why not me by mindy kaling and they have bossy pants by tina fey so if you guys are interested in audible i do have a link below that gives you a free audiobook and a 30-day trial it's audible.com slash best dress. And then also if you're on your phone and it's more convenient for you, you can also text best dress to 500 500 and it'll like automatically guide you through the process. Okay, now let's jump into the details of the business. Obviously the first step is actually obtaining the thrifted product. Thrift stores are obviously the main option. That's still where I do probably like 90% of my shopping for stock for my store. And that's definitely the easiest way to start out. Pretty much every single town has like a Goodwill or Salvation Army. The quality of thrifted clothing definitely depends on where you you live some of you guys in the comments are like i don't fucking know how you find this stuff because my thrift store sucks some places the thrift stores are just less poppin' than others objectively. But if I have any advice, I'd say first try some off-brand thrift stores. I feel like naturally when we go looking for a thrift store, we're gonna type in Goodwill or Salvation Army or one of the big chains. But actually in my hometown in Maryland, which is this random ass suburb where you wouldn't think that there's a lot of high fashion or like really cool pieces in thrift stores. Some of the best and most unique stuff that I found has just been from really local stores that aren't huge nationwide chains. Another tip is to basically thrift in the richest area that you can find, you can actually get on Zillow.com, like the real estate website and look 
up the housing prices and where the housing is most expensive is probably the richest area. And they might have some higher quality brands at their thrift stores. Sorry, that sounds like really elitist, but that's just the truth. Another thing to consider though, and cross reference with that is how many people are going to these thrift stores and how many of them are also reselling or like kind of looking for the same type of pieces as you. I've run into this problem in LA where a lot of the thrift stores in more central LA, there are a lot of like 20 year old hipster pieces of shit like me who are looking for really similar clothing. So sometimes that can make it hard because the thrift stores are so picked over and there's so much competition in order to get those really good pieces. Even though I live in the city, sometimes I have found it helpful to go further out into the suburbs where there's less competition in the customer base, if that makes sense. Other than that, it is really hit or miss. You really just have to explore the thrift stores in your area and go over multiple weeks because the stock does change so much. Some of my favorite thrift stores have had super shitty weeks and some have had randomly really good weeks. So it's important to just keep going back and keep trying. Also, if you can go on the off days or find when your thrift store does a big restocking, that can be so helpful because you get to be the first person to pick through the clothing. Another option for where to find clothing is estate sales. Now this is a little bit more effort and like a little bit more extra, but basically these are house sales where somebody has died or they're like moving into a retirement home and they're selling off all of the stuff in their house, which is kind of fucked up and depressing if you think about it too much. But let's ignore that and talk about how you get some fashion finds there. In order to find estate sales in your area, literally just Google estate sales and then your city or your zip code. And there are tons of websites where people list this stuff. A lot of them will also post a description of the main things that they have. And some of them even have photos of the types of items that you can find at the estate sale. Definitely look at those carefully and don't just go to any random estate sale because a lot of them in my personal experience have been really focused around furniture and like guitars and cameras and rare items like that and not as much around clothing. But if they do mention in the description that there's a lot of vintage or designer clothing, it's definitely worth checking it out. My last set of options are all things that I haven't really explored, but I think a lot of more professional Depop and Instagram sellers use these. And those are vintage wholesale places. I'm not very familiar with them, but you can Google it. And in a lot of major cities, they'll have these warehouses with just piles and piles of clothing from like 1930s to 1980s or whatever. And you can buy them by the pound. And then other options are like events or flea markets or yard sales. Basically, I don't know, anywhere that you can find cheap clothing definitely works. Although thrift stores are a great place to start. Next up, a lot of you guys ask me what I thrift or how do I know what to buy and what's gonna sell. I think first and foremost, it's just a matter of personal taste. The best strategy is to just buy stuff that you would genuinely wear yourself and you would pay good money for yourself. That way it makes sure that you're picking high quality pieces. And then an added bonus is that if you happen to not sell something online, you can just keep them for yourself and it's like not a total loss. Beyond that though, another way to think about it is that each item should have a selling point, especially when you're starting out. It can really help to either have a good brand name attached to the piece of clothing you're trying to sell, like Tommy Hilfiger, everybody shits themselves for, including me. Champion, Ralph Lauren, Nautica, basically shit that you see at Urban Outfitters, or just high quality contemporary brands or designer brands that generally sell for a much higher price point. Or another selling point that I look for is a really good fabric that adds objective value to the piece. You guys know I thrift an insane amount of silk blouses or silk slip dresses. They're always really popular and they always sell really fast. Sweaters that are 100% cashmere. Also, if you're not super into the whole like vegan life, leather and fur and suede can be really good selling points as well. Another strategy is to look for items that you can add value to through modification. This takes a little bit of a creative project runway mind. But when I see stuff in thrift stores, I'm always thinking about how can I transform this into something that's a little bit more modern. Really easy modifications include cropping things, which I do all the time. If it's a knit fabric, a lot of the time you can get away with not having to hem it either if you're lazy like me because the fabric isn't gonna unravel anyway. Hemming a skirt or adding darts, simple things like repairing a hole or replacing a button, moving or replacing the straps on a dress so that they make a nicer neckline. And then even something as simple as ironing a piece of clothing can add a lot of value to it. A lot of people will overlook shirts that have been hanging out in the thrift store and they're kind of wrinkly, but I swear to God, ironing can make the biggest difference and it can make it look brand new again. Overall, a really important thing to consider is what's your profit margin on an item. You'd think that buying stuff from the thrift store and like reselling it, you can't go wrong because stuff from the thrift store is so cheap. That unfortunately is not always the case. So an example I'd use is you find some really cute shoes at the thrift store. They're $15. You think somebody would pay $30 for them. So you feel like you'd be able to make a profit, but depending on the platform you use with apps and PayPal and taxes combined, that's like a 10 to 20% cut. And then shipping can get really expensive, especially for heavy items. And that's something important to consider for shoes 
shoes, you're looking at shipping costs around $10. So with all that factored in, if you sold them for $30 total, including shipping, you'd actually pretty much just be breaking even and you wouldn't have really made any money for all of your effort. So sorry, that was like a little bit math heavy, but that's kind of the calculation that you have to do in your head in order to determine whether something is worth buying. So relating to my last spiel about profit margin, next we're gonna talk about pricing. You kind of develop a feel for it after a couple months of seeing what sells for certain prices and kind of being present on these apps. But when you're starting out, I would first of all recommend that you keep a log of everything that you buy and the price that it sells for. And if you want to be extra like I am, keep track of how long it takes you to sell that item as well. And that'll help you gather data with your specific customer base, what's selling and what isn't. Another tip if you don't know how to price an item is to search on whatever platform you're selling on, whether that's Depop or Poshmark and search for similar items. For example, if you're selling a fur coat, search for vintage fur coat or if it's a specific brand, like you found a dress from Urban Outfitters or Reformation, search that brand and see what other people are pricing similar items for. And you can even, in a lot of apps, look at the sold section and see specifically the prices that people are actually willing to pay. And it can be helpful to honestly ask yourself how much you would pay for it if you were the customer. I would say, just in general, it's great to put yourself in the customer's shoes. And finally, some other factors to consider. Obviously, I talked about these earlier. If it's a really good brand like Tommy Hilfiger, if it's a good fabric, if it's a designer brand or super rare item, or if you're really popular as a seller and you have a really good reputation and a lot of followers on whatever platform you use, those can all be factors that help you price your clothing a little bit more expensive. I'd say other than the actual process of you going to the thrift store and picking out cool stuff, the main thing that adds value to thrifted clothing is having photos that show people how to style it, how good it looks, and like giving them style inspiration. That's basically like part of the service you're providing. I would highly, highly suggest when you're taking photos to model your clothing. A lot of people are hesitant to actually get in front of the camera and model the clothing, but I would as I said before, put yourself in the buyer's shoes. When I'm shopping online personally, I don't feel as comfortable buying clothing that I haven't seen on a model because then how am I supposed to visualize it and how am I supposed to know that I'm gonna be happy with my purchase? And especially if it's a unique or thrifted item, it's so helpful to show people how it hangs on your body, how the fit works and how you would style it in an outfit. The easiest way to start taking photos and the thing that everybody can do is to just take them on self timer on your phone. Or if you have like a friend or roommate who's down, you can ask them to take photos of you too and that probably makes the process even more efficient. But I get really uncomfortable modeling around people, so I just like to take them by myself on self-timer. If you're taking photos indoors, definitely try to take photos in front of a big window, possibly in a light room so that the light is kind of ambient and like bouncing off all of the walls. You can never go wrong with taking photos in front of a plain white background, super simple and keeps the focus on the clothing. Or if you wanna get a little bit more stylistic, you can put a couple decorations to also kind of frame yourself in the photo. I would just recommend keeping the decorations somewhat minimal and keeping them consistent throughout your photos so that whatever your feed or your store is, it looks really consistent and professional. If you're taking photos outside, try to shoot during the golden hour, which is basically sunrise or sunset. The sun is at a lower angle and it gives you this really gorgeous, like soft glow, and it doesn't look very harsh at all. If you're not available during those hours and you're trying to take photos during the daytime, definitely avoid the direct sunlight. It can cast really harsh shadows and try to find an area like under a tree or in some light shadow on a cloudy day so that the lighting is a little bit diffused. Outside, you can get super creative with the backgrounds. If you live in like a house, you can use a garage door or you can take photos like on a balcony in front of random buildings. I don't know, you can get creative with it. Even if you think you live in like an ugly town, I swear there are a ton of really cool backgrounds out there if you are just keeping an eye out. In terms of photo editing, I like to keep it pretty simple. What I like to do if I took it on my phone is to play around with the lighting a little bit. A lot of the times my photos come out a little bit dark, so I like to turn up the brightness. A great thing to play around with if you have an iPhone is the brilliance section. And this is a great one to play with the dynamic between like the foreground and the background and the shadows. I don't really know how to describe it, but changing the brilliance can honestly make your photos look so much better. If you are fiending for that aesthetic like me, I like to put my photos through Visco just a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to filter them too hard because I still want the colors to be accurate, but especially if they're taken on a phone, I feel like the Visco filter helps them look a little bit more vintage and a little less crusty and iPhone-y. After you have your photos, the next thing is having a description for your items. This is pretty obvious, but the first thing you want to do is disclose any flaws or any like significant wear. Sometimes I think it's fun to include a little line about what you would pair the item with or what event it would be perfect for, or if you feel like it's inspired by something like it's a dress that looks like Marilyn Monroe would wear it. I think that can add a lot of personality to an item and help somebody envision how they would actually use it in their wardrobe. Especially if the item is a vintage clothing piece or it's like a dress or pants, it's super helpful to include the measurements. As we all know, women's clothing sizes are freaking wild in. I don't know who's a drunk ass determined like what size is what, but it varies so much across brands and especially across time periods if your clothing is vintage. And then if you are modeling the clothing and you're comfortable with it, sometimes it's helpful to provide your size and your height as reference. 
people always ask me what height I am in my videos and like in my reselling business. I think it's just helpful for people to understand how it would fit their frame. And if you have a similar body type to your customer, it can be so helpful because then they know exactly how it's going to fit them too. Okay, the last step after you've listed your item and it's finally sold is shipping. Basically, the main thing that I use is USPS first class mail. What a godsend. I'll link the website that I use to make shipping labels below. It's literally just through PayPal, but by buying the labels online, they give you around 10% off. So it's a nice discount and it can add up. And I always like to make my labels online because I go insane waiting in lines at the post office. For some reason, it always takes like a fucking hour. So like I said, the main service that I ship through is USPS first class. It ships in three to five business days. It's really affordable. It'll always cost you less than $5, around three to $4 for most packages, but it's only available for items that weigh less than a pound. Most clothing fits in this category, but it's important to check. I own this little shipping scale that I bought on Amazon for like $15. I definitely recommend getting one of those so you can weigh your packages at home. If your item is over a pound, I've still not found like a super affordable option, but most of the time what I do is just use the USPS priority mail flat rate boxes. Usually for outerwear or shoes, I'll end up using a medium box and that is around $13 online, which is kind of pricey, but it's ultimately cheaper than any other option that I've been able to find. You can also definitely check out UPS. In in my experience, UPS ground is usually more expensive. The only case that it's cheaper is if your customer actually lives really close to you. USPS, it's a flat rate for anywhere across the United States, so distance doesn't matter. But UPS calculates based on distance, the size of the box, and the weight of the object. Because I'm in LA, I'm like pretty far away from most people. But if they live in like the suburbs of LA, sometimes it can come out to a decent price. Back when I did this casually and it wasn't like a proper business, I would just reuse random shipping materials that I got. I ordered like way too much shit off Amazon, so I have all of those Amazon Prime boxes. Boxes. I think it's a great way to reuse packing materials, but unfortunately, a lot of people would think of that as pretty unprofessional. And if you wanna take it more seriously as a business, I buy these little plastic mailers off of Amazon. I think it's around $15 for a hundred, which isn't bad, especially considering that they're so light. Sometimes they can help cut down on shipping costs because the packaging itself is not that heavy and it's not adding weight onto your label. I think that's it for shipping. But before I go, I wanted to run through the different platforms that you can sell on. I referenced a couple times throughout this video that a lot of factors depend on which platform you're selling on. So I thought I would break down like the pros and cons and fees of each one. Poshmark, like I said before, is the app that I started selling on. Poshmark overall is definitely more brand focused. I think a lot of people are searching for clothing by brand and not necessarily for vintage clothing. And the system isn't as like influencer or follower based, if that makes sense. So it doesn't really matter if you have a big following on Poshmark or not, I feel like you have a pretty equal chance of selling your item. It's also a little bit more of an older slash preppier crowd. Like I said, I think it was one of the first big reselling apps and I think Depop has kind of taken over since then. Poshmark takes a 20% cut of your final selling price or $2.95, whichever one is more. And their shipping on all orders is $5.99 flat and that is priority mail. Kind of shitty for light items because like I mentioned earlier, through USPS first class mail, you can ship the same item for like three to four dollars, but it's really, really good for heavy items because the label ships items up to five pounds, which means for shoes or jackets or like really big and bulky items, you're actually getting a super good deal because if you ship that by yourself, it would cost 13 to $18 for the same type of label. Overall, Poshmark is also more regulated and they have a more active customer service team. I would say that Poshmark is a good place to start out if you're selling more brand focused items. If you're finding a lot of contemporary brands like Urban Outfitters or Topshop or Zara, I think there's a bigger market there, but it can be harder to sell genuinely vintage items if they don't have a good brand name attached. Second up is Depop. It's another app and website, and unlike Poshmark, it's available internationally. It's definitely a more updated and Instagram feel. And likewise, I find that selling is a lot more follower slash influencer based. There are like some people that are super Depop famous and they have like thousands of followers. So it's kind of like Instagram in that way. And the customers generally are a lot more hip and young. I think it's a lot of people in high school and college and living in big cities and like hipster ass people like myself. Depop itself takes a 10% cut of your sales, but keep in mind if you're doing your own shipping on Depop, it'll take that 10% fee out of your selling price and also a 10% fee out of the shipping price. So it like gets a little extra fee action in there. Depop also uses PayPal for its payment. So there's an additional 2.9% cut that PayPal takes. So overall we're looking at around 13%. Depop does give you a lot more flexibility for shipping. They have their own shipping options that are graded by weight. So it's 450 for an item that's up to half a pound which is not worth it. You should do your own shipping for that. $8 for up to two pounds, $10 for up to 10 pounds. Those are when it starts being a good deal. Or if you'd rather arrange your own shipping, Depop lets you do that. So overall, I would recommend Depop if you're selling 
selling stuff that's like a little bit more edgy and vintage and unbranded. Our next selling platform is Instagram, which I've personally never had a shop on myself, but some of my favorite vintage reselling shops are run through Instagram. The main advantage of Instagram is that it's a really seamless way to take advantage of any followers that you already have there. And everybody already owns Instagram and is scrolling through it like every single day. So nobody has to download a new app just to go look at your clothing. The disadvantage that goes along with that though, is that there's no direct system of selling and buying products on Instagram. So you have to redirect your sales through your DMs or through the comment section and get customers to PayPal you, in which case there's that 3% fee. Or I've seen some sellers use Venmo and then obviously that's completely free and you can avoid fees altogether. It is a little bit more work for you then because you have to determine who's made the sale and you have to designate your items as sold. And there's a lot more one-on-one -on -one customer communication through DMs. Another thing to consider is that if you're a new Instagram shop or you don't have a whole lot of reviews or followers or repute yet, some people might be hesitant to Venmo you or PayPal you because obviously there's the possibility that they're gonna get scammed and there's not like a specific marketplace or app backing you up saying you will get your product and you will get your shipping label and you're not gonna just Venmo somebody your money and never hear from them again. And obviously on Instagram, the shipping is up to you. There's no enforced shipping system. So you just make the label online and then DM your customer their tracking number to make sure that their product is on the way to them. Overall, I would recommend Instagram if you already have a bunch of Instagram followers or it could be useful to use in combination with Depop. If you wanna start out on Depop and then gain some exposure and then you can transition to Instagram if you find that easier or if you wanna avoid those fees. And that brings me to my last option, which is having your own website. This is definitely something to look into after you have a little bit more of an established business and customers who would want to actually follow you from one of those platforms onto your website. After selling on Poshmark and Depop for a couple years, I made my own website with Squarespace, but there are a bunch of other website services as well that you can use. I am not the best at keeping my website stocked because I am in college and doing YouTube stuff. I'm gonna try to be better at it over the summer, but so far I've really liked it. I really like that I have complete control over the store policies and the aesthetic of my store. Unlike apps where there's kind of a set interface and all you have control over is the photos, on a website you can change everything, the colors, the branding, the photo size, how many photos like appear in each row. But it's also important to consider that there are upfront costs with that, the cost of buying a domain, paying a web developer if you wanna do that, or just the time investment in building your own website, and potentially having to pay a service like Squarespace monthly to set up your website. Another pro of having a website is that it just makes your whole business look a lot more professional and people can access it from anywhere, from their phone, from their computer, and they don't have to go through a specific app or go through a middleman. If you do get to the point where you're starting a website, there is some legal slash tax stuff that you should take into consideration. I am by no means an expert in this. I'm still trying to figure it out. Legally, you can just have a website under your own name and you just use your social security number for tax purposes. But I have heard that in terms of like avoiding getting sued and getting tax breaks, it's a good idea to incorporate sometimes, which you need a lawyer for, or I think you can do it online if you just pay a couple hundred dollars. I have not gotten to that point. I'm still trying to figure it out, um, but I will probably incorporate soon because legally, I think that's a good idea. Anyways, that brings me to the end of this very long video. I hope that I covered everything that you guys had questions about. If you have questions about more stuff, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this business from like somebody who's much more accomplished in it than I am, feel free to listen to Girl Boss on Audible. Again, there's my link below, audible.com slash bestdress. Or if you're on your phone, you can also text bestdress to 500, 500 and get a free audiobook and 30 day trial. Um, I think that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.